Yeah, yeah, hello. You are welcome to the Java guide. So here we are taking a look into uh, more advanced concepts of uh, object-oriented programming. So we start today, uh, we'll be discussing today the concept of composition. Okay, I think previously we've discussed that we'll be using encapsulation before I've been able to discuss uh, the basics of OOP, we've discussed methods, we've discussed classes, we've discussed objects and then instances and so on. So today we'll be taking a step further in our study of object-oriented programming. So we'll be taking a look at um, composition. So basically when we say composition, composition is when one particular class contains a reference to another class. Okay? So basically, a class it just contains a uh, reference to another class. When one class uh, contains a reference to objects of another class, contains a reference to another class. So in other words, you can say that composition actually models uh, as a relationship. So when I say has a relationship, it models uh, a situation, for example, what a car has an engine, right? So the car has a reference towards an engine. So you could have a car class and then you have an engine class and then the car would now reference that uh, engine class. So that's a typical example. Another one could be a body contains or has an heart, okay? So composition actually, it models uh as a relationship as a relationship so if you are working on a project and then you are trying to actually model this kind of a relationship so you are best served uh, by using uh, composition so we'll be taking a look at an example so we'll be taking a look at an example where uh we'll be making use of uh, composition so I'm going to um, create a class here, and then I would call it employee class, okay? So this employee class will then contain some instance variables. So we'll be making use of a for the private string ML name, no, let's say first name, okay? Private string, last name, Private string, uh, there's a social security security number. And then so I'll then I have private date. So I'm going to create uh, this class. I'm going to create this class shortly. So basically, or let me create the class first, and I'll come back to update uh, this class. So I'll create a dates class here. So ideally, Java contains a date, an inbuilt uh, date class. So, but for the purpose of this class, I will just uh, create a, 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 a sample date class to simulate uh, composition. So you could have private int day. Okay, private int month, uh, private uh, int year. Okay, so we have this uh, date class. So, uh, okay, so since we have this date class, I can go back to my employee. So, an employee would basically have a need to reference the date class. For example, an employee has a birth date, okay? An employee has probably a day he was hired, and uh, basically an employee would likely also have a wedding uh, anniversary. So basically, these are uh, these are just some references to that that some references that might need that uh, this class that I created. So I will just call this uh, private dates, okay? Private dates, best dates, okay? So I just like to emphasize here that even the classes that you create are also going to be they are valid uh, data types. The class that you create for yourself, they are also valid data. So you can see in this case how the date class I created is serves as a 
data type for my birth date, right? So, and then I could also have a private date via, let's say, employment, employment date. And then the last one I could have private date, let's say, wedding date. So you can see these three instance variables here containing references to what to this uh, this class that I created here. So uh, to take a step further, so what I will just do is um, I would uh, create so I'll create a constructor. So I'll just generate this constructor here, an all argument constructor, a constructor that contains all of these guys as an argument. Okay, yeah, then I will then create getters and then setters as well. Okay, for all of the, these guys as well. Okay, good. So I think, uh, yes, I think this would uh, serve us well in our, in our example. Okay, so now you can see, like I've mentioned before, we have implemented composition here. So now I'm going to create a test class. So I want to create an object of this employee class, bearing in mind that it contains reference to another class. Okay, so before doing that, I would like to also emphasize again that we are making use of encapsulation here. And encapsulation is basically information hiding. So here we are hiding every access to our instance variables. So we don't want we don't want anyone to access these instance variables directly. So as a result, we are providing setter methods, public setter set methods. You can see set first name, set last name. So we are providing these public uh, set methods to enable uh, a client to make use of this class. So with this setter method, you can then manipulate uh, these. Um, you can manipulate all of these instance variables. So, but. Definitely, you are not giving access to uh, a manipulate your instance variables directly. So inside this composition class, I would now have a main method. Okay, so I'm going to now create an uh, object of employee. Okay, employee. I would uh, say, so let's call this guy uh, John, for example. It was new employee right so this employee now requires this for all of this following information due to the constructor we provided so we provide let's provide all of this information here so let's call this guy Musa let's call him uh, Ajibadi social security number let's say 2201 um, okay so we now need references to our dates here. So if you remember, we have our date objects here. We need, we need birth date, we need uh, wedding date, we need uh, employment date as well. So I could just come here and then create new dates, okay? So, and then I think this is not going to be very, to make this code too cumbersome. So let me just come here and then create a date object. <clears throat> what new bits? So yeah, we got a bit. Okay. So here in my this class, I didn't provide set and getter methods. So I'll just do that. I'll generate that instead of having to type it at once. So getter and setter. I'll uh, add this. Okay. So. I'll come back here now and then say date dot set day. Uh, let me create it. Let me add a constructor here so I can use that to. Uh, but then I can just continue anyway. So I'll just do date dot set day. Okay, so yeah, I could provide 20. The date dot set month, uh, let's say August. Okay. Then 
date dot set here. I could say two twenty twenty one. Okay. So um. Okay. So let me call this birth date since we are going to be needing. So I'm going to refactor and rename this as a birth date. Okay. So you see that it changes all of these guys at once. So another one, I would also want to change add a wedding date. Okay. Wedding date. So I just say wedding date dot set. Okay, I think this would just be making it too long. So let me just come to this class, create a constructor. Constructor, all argument constructor. So, okay. So having done this, I can just say date, uh, bed date equals new date. So yeah, I can just specify the day. I can say 13th. Mm -hmm. Then say nineteen ninety eight. Okay, I could have another one for my wedding date. And I'll call it new date. I could say ten or twenty twenty. Let's say date employ employed dates. At the new uh, four seven twenty twenty three. Okay. So basically, I've created three data objects now. So inside this employee, don't forget that the constructor requires uh, this remaining guys there: birth dates, employment date, and then wedding dates. So I'll just come back to we are testing it and then I'll just fill in the remaining guys, that date, employed date, then wedding date. So I think we are good now. So one more thing I would like to do here is uh, I could add a to string method uh, to string so that I can see a summary of an object that I, I create. So, um, okay, so let me change this guy to employee. So, here I'll just say I want to print out employee. Okay, so if I run this now, let's see what we have. Okay, so we have this information here. Uh, I can see it's a bit long. Okay. So you can see that it gets it creates all of these guys for me. Oh, okay. My birth date is showing this. Okay. So this is actually showing because I did not create a toString method. So the toString method makes it easy for you to actually print out details of your object. So I'll just go back to this class and then I would create a toString method now. Okay. So if I run this again now. Then we see that good. So you see that this bed is it's also <coughs> so you see that this bed date also comes out uh, fine, employee date comes out fine, wedding date comes out fine. So basically, this is how you can employ composition. Okay, this is how you can employ composition, this is how you can create your <coughs> you can create your objects. Okay, so you can see where the name composition comes from, where one particular object composes another uh, set of objects like we did here. So uh, this is, uh, you can feel free to practice more, look for more case studies, work on them on your own, and then ensure you understand uh, these concepts very well. So see you in our next um, video.